Accept your death. So we hosted our first community event yesterday, the pilot episode of the Bone Dome. And I was reminded how much actually goes into these things, because it's been a long time since I've actually hosted one. But there was a lot of interest, a lot of people saying, you know, how do I sign up? How do I get in? All that kind of stuff. And I'm still not 100% worked out on those details. I want to kind of, this is, it was such a good turnout that I really want to like kind of speed run the rest of the process into getting this ready, doing it properly and all that kind of stuff. Um, and making sure that I have like proper graphics and, you know, a little scoreboard stuff going on, all that kind of stuff. And we're all set up. I don't really know what to do about the technical issues with the desync stuff we kept happening at the end there. That was a bit of a, a dapper on the whole thing, but at some point I had to, <laughs> we were going on to like five hours of stream. So I was like, okay, we got to, we got to stop. Got to got to call it somewhere, right? Yeah. At some point it's got to give, but I, I feel like the, um, the turnout was good. The feedback was very positive. People are looking forward to this. I think there might have been a little bit of viewer fatigue with how long the stream was, perhaps. Because um, I could just tell by kind of watching the numbers and whatnot. But I'm definitely, we're definitely going to do it. It's going to be a fun thing. It was uh, <laughs> quite funny to see all the the salt for Cyrax in the chat. Oh, man. <laughs> Jimmy Potato, like, instant retiring. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> It, it it was it's pretty funny. He I think he flat out said he didn't have any fun at all, <laughs> uh, which is yeah. just hilarious to me. The, the Cyrax experience, right? <laughs> right. Zero fun. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a good turnout. Do you plan on keeping this as like exhibition matches, or are you turning it into like an online tournament circuit sort of sort of thing? I'm thinking of kind of maybe um, doing like a couple things, like maybe do an exhibition one week. And then an eight-man bracket the next week kind of idea. And then just kind of mix and matching. I haven't really come up with a... I want to do both. Like, I really want to show off, like, everyone who, who has the skills in the community and really wants to put themselves out there. Because, like, it's a big thing to, like, put yourself out and, you know, risk losing, especially pretty bad in a tournament, you know, in front of people. So that's it takes a lot. So I definitely want to have a place to showcase people. and But I also don't want it to be five hours every week kind of a thing, right? So something that's a little bit digestible, but also that we can do, come together as a community. So if anyone has any ideas of the kind of stuff they'd be interested as a viewer and as a competitor, then, you know, let me know in the comments down there and uh, be good to get that feedback. Speaking of comments... No way. Look you're, at that transition. You're not stealing my thunder this week. Oh, hey there. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I was sent... I was setting myself up for that one, and you just... <laughs> oh, I, I, I got you. You yeeted it from me, so... Uh, robbed. Robbed. Uh, that being said, let's get into the comments here. First one here from Terry. Shang's cameo morph is now easily the coolest move in the game. The fact that you can meter burn it is just the cherry on top. Truly plays like a shapeshifter now with the morphing. Uh, Mimic composite characters have become pretty obsolete in the fighting game genre, so I'm glad MK is keeping archetype alive i agree i think that was such a smart move but i will say that some of the steals feel kind of redundant maybe i just haven't figured them out yet like the kung lao spin not really sure how to use that i guess it's a kind of a screw neutral tool a little bit i guess um the pharaoh one is disgusting because getting it like a Tick command grab off of every string he has is pretty nuts. There's a couple that yeah, he, he doesn't he doesn't go into tour stance and now now you're in like a three way mix up or whatever, right? It just comes out. It's just a special cancel. It's <laughs> just all of a sudden there's fair right in your face grabbing yeah. you, doing damage because you blocked. <laughs> oh, it makes me want to play Shing. He's super fun. I will say the down forward um, input for the special move is kind of frustrating because. You're going from crouching into his forward four a lot, because that's like his main pressure string. And the amount of times I'll accidentally get a cameo steal and just get blown up because of it was a little Does he have a back forward four? I no, I think he has a forward back four, which is how he like transforms into his okay. opponent. I don't believe he has okay. a down back four. Yeah, I feel like that's like a, a habit you kind of need to get used to like when you're a sub zero and you're crouching and then it's like, Oh, I'm going to take my turn with the four to one and you get an ice ball instead. Right. Yeah. When you come from crouching, if you do like a back forward motion instead to kind of get rid of that down input, as long as you don't have another special attached to that or like 
you know, with uh, a sector, you want to backdash into her forward advancing like forward two, but you get a flamethrower. But if you kind of turn that forward two into like a core circle to get rid of that back input and like flush it out, but it still, I feel like it happens all the time. I totally feel your pain. Yeah. That's a big problem. It's, uh, I'm sure it's just me getting, uh, getting used to uh, my inputs and stuff. And I'm trying to use more moves than him because sometimes I get a little bit too hyper focused on the forward four and I forget that he has other good strings. So I'm trying to, trying to mix that up as well. So, but I wanted to gush about he, that a little bit. Yeah, he's got that old, that new string and old man as well, right? I guess we can talk about that later. It's not specific to this comment. It wasn't called out, but. Um, no, we definitely will. We definitely will go into that. So. Uh, thank you for the comment. Moving on to the next one here, Mark. I did not play much of this year one, but I really vibe with Ermac and Sonia. Ermac's one, two, three string is a mix up with Sonia's overhead leg grab. Lots of air combo content, continu continuation. I really struggled there. And meterless teleport combo on conversion. I still have not seen much Ermac around lately, but I have seen, I have seen quite a bit more Sonia. And uh, even you messing around with her, some some sector Sonya stuff was uh, kind of crazy. Ooh, baby. Yeah. She's, I already kind of liked her, uh, but didn't really like, you know, you using her. Um, I don't know what it was about it. The, the dive kick is a very, very nice addition. And the more I looked at it, like, just the better it got, right? The frame data and all of that sort of stuff. So... I don't know. I'm I'm also a big fan of old Sonya Blade. Seeing Shang Tsung morph into Sonya Blade for the the leg grab is oh man, kind of hilarious to me. That's one of the it's better very morphs. Funny. It's very funny, especially if she has like the the MK1 like or uh, yeah, more original like the green leotard outfit. That yeah, one. the like aerobics outfit. Yeah, the Olivia Newton yeah. John outfit, and then her can, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> it feels like the original <laughs> Mortal Kombat again. Shang Tsung morphing. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, really funny. Uh, all I, that she's missing is a kiss of death, you know. Yeah, is that uh, is that her cameo fatality? I actually I think it is. I don't yeah, remember. Okay. That would make that, once I said that, I was like, yeah, I think that's actually a fatality. I haven't seen the fatality in a long time. I used her for a whole season, but that was before she got like any buffs. I think she had just gotten the projectile buff, so I was using it for zoning. Yeah, her leg grab was still a mid, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I just wanted to take that opportunity to gush about Sonya a little bit. We'll do that a little bit more in the next segment here, but, uh, Isaac Taylor says the first thing I'm doing in the expansion, check for Quan Chi buffs. And that is exactly where I wanted to transition into our next topic, which was the balance changes. What well, we thought of all the balance changes that came with, uh, with chaos range. And I can start with Quan Chi because he didn't get much, but what he got was fairly significant. So there were obviously the tracking on his down forward four, um, which was that mid kick, is miles away better than it was before. It's still not the greatest. It still isn't the greatest, but it is like way more usable. And now with that, with the standing four as well, it's like it's an actual threat now. We played that first day, right? It's definitely harder to get away from. And you were even commenting how much better it felt, like you're hitting it more often. Yeah, and like just being able, like the hit advantage on it being like really good gets you like portals and bone domes or whatever you want to get off of it. Um, that was in the patch notes. I have the patch notes up here because there's a couple things that I wanted to kind of go over. Um, but the one thing that wasn't in the patch notes in regards to Quan Chi was um, that his projectiles, uh, they'll actually combo into standing four on trade now. So I don't know if they increased the hit advantage on them or whatnot, but. I saw somebody post that on Twitter, and I was like, oh, that's quite interesting. So yeah, if Quan can get a trade with his projectiles, it works with his skull, his forward skull, or his purple back forward skulls. Um, he can combo standing forward into Bone Dome, which if you have Motaro, that's a, or Kung Lao, I guess, that's a full combo off of a trade into mid-300s damage, I believe. So that's Not too shabby. Pretty good. Beefing up his zoning game, which is exactly what I wanted them to do. Uh, still has the slow pokes and all the gaps and all that kind of stuff, but man, he's, he's, he's eating good. He's eating good with this patch, especially with the buffs to all the other cameos as well. Kind of increases the amount of things that he has at his disposal, even though I don't, I only really use Shujinko and I think it now he's fine with Shujinko. Um, but he has more opportunities, more things that he can use now as opposed to before. Yeah. Just that one little change, you know? What balance changes were you most interested in there, Hater? I know that you had talked about trying out Tanya a little bit because of some of the 
um, buffs and change, no, not even really buffs, but changes that they made to her leading up to that. Did yeah, that... they added a little bit more complexity to her uh, with the with the guidance charges. So they're they're slower, but she has new combo roots because it can two and one cancel from the dive kick, and she can make her projectile faster, and she can. You know, the her armored move got nerfed, but if she has the guidance charges, she can expend that to bring out all the hits on block still. And if she's using that neutral, she's got projectile immunity. So all those things combined seemed uh made her a way more appealing. So that was one of the first things that I tried. Unfortunately, it's still, you know, it's uh it's still Tanya at the end of the day, and I still like her. Um a little too straightforward. She's still a little dry. She's still just no matter what they try to add to her, she still just feels like forward to the character, you know? Yeah, that's kind of how I felt, too. Even, like, watching James playing last night, you know? Like, seeing a bunch of cool stuff, and at the end, it's 4-2-1-1 Motaro shot. 4 2 one It's one so Motaro good. Shot. How could you not use it, right? It's But it just makes it just so kind of like, I don't know, I don't... It's not very, it's not very fun to me, but I still like her. I'm going to try to have a side Tanya. And, um... We'll see. Nothing with Melina. No changes with Melina. No changes that I'm aware of. Nothing in the patch notes. Yeah, we know that some things can be missed in the patch notes. I didn't realize that they had added a restart button to Invasions until I tweeted about it. And I was like, I really wish they added this restart button to Invasions. And then Derek DM'd me and was like, hey, actually, uh, I think we did. But I think I forgot to put that in the patch notes. And then I checked. And I was like, oh, yeah, you did. Sorry about that. So that was a nice quality of life because I hate those... Those missions where, like, it's timed and you know that with the amount of time you have left, you're not, there's no possible way you can finish it and you just sit there right. waiting for the time. Well, I just, it re you know, return to map and then just go back in is what I used to do. Yeah. I just dip. Either way, having a restart button now is super I didn't nice. even realize that was there. I didn't either. That's why I tweeted about it. <laughs> and then Derek quickly Dang. corrected me. He was really nice about it. Um, but yeah, no, it's... It, it it's things like that that you know and you mentioned specifically the feedback that you know they heard about that kind of stuff and that's why they added it so they're definitely paying attention and and you can tell in the changes and those types of things that they're making that they're paying attention um and that's really important to me i i i, I agree and uh I think they continue to kind of like, but they're making their own sort of assessment decision. Like it's kind of, we've talked about that before to where we've heard you loud and clear and then we get the change that we want or we get like something uh, like different. Like we've heard you loud and clear, but we don't care. Like we don't want it to be played <laughs> yeah, that way or something, yeah. you know? Uh, but they're definitely listening. It's not just falling on corporate overlord deaf ears and things like that. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's their game and it's going to be their decision and maybe it's still coming and they haven't got to it yet. Who knows how they prioritize stuff, but it's true. Yeah. And you can jump to shout out to Derek for interfacing with you about that. Yeah. I was, um, I was really impressed by that. I was, uh, yeah. It blew me away. It blew me away. It wasn't even like maybe five minutes after I tweeted and he was already in my DMs. I was like, Oh, wow. What a guy. I remember in MK11, if you got a Quitality and clipped it and posted it on Twitter, he would always retweet it. He committed to retweeting it. <laughs> and so it was just always this litany of Quitality retweets on his timeline. And he I did it. one time and, he, dude, he he did it in like four minutes or whatever. Like that dude's glued to Twitter, or he was back then. Yeah, and it made him a little hard to follow because my feed would be kind of like, just like, you know. have a sea of Quitalities. But I mean, uh, he's a good guy. I've met him a couple times. Had some chats. Um, other characters that you play, I see there's a couple notes here for Ashra, but they look more like fixes than actual like changes, like more like visual things. And there was the, those are speckled into a lot of characters, right? A couple little just footnotes about some sort of animation change or side facing change or things like that, but nothing that I ever picked up on. You ever see things in patch notes? You're like, I didn't even know that was a thing, really. Oh, totally, all <laughs> the time. Like whatever. It's like, what is that even? You know. And it's like, it's. I, I we forget that they have like a whole QA department. That's that. Like that's their job is to find all these things and hopefully find them before we do, <laughs> so someone doesn't exploit them out in the wild. You know, they can fix them. Like Homelander. Yeah. Who? Um, I don't know. I liked his changes. I think they balanced them in the proper way. I've fought against a few of them now, and it doesn't feel nearly as as uh, overwhelming and uh when he does get those dash command grab combos the, those that damage there is like it's gone it's 
it's it's where it should be for like a full screen command grab basically right <laughs> and that that was the change right they added the actual throw scaling to the combo since it started with the grab that was missing before yeah which was what one of the one of the things he needed and then they made um fair as low a little bit more like actually legitimately punishable at minus 12 so those yep. two things right there just made quality of life for the game so much easier so much easier um at least for playing online anyways i am cuz i used to run into those all the time and now when i do they feel a little bit more a little bit more i don't know manageable manageable that's a good that's a good term that's a good term yeah i would say though that i feel like havoc is probably the winner of this patch like that character got so much love and like it's his season the fourth right? dlc character that's what they're calling him yeah the fourth dlc character so i i, I don't know all of the specifics of like how he changed i'm happy for havoc players um i know he has that low attack now and a little bit of change on his armor moves but he feels like a legitimate threat now which it was very specific pairings before, but Havoc Movado is very frustrating to fight against, I will say. Converts off of everything. He does. He's, he's wild out there. Like, they went... Even Havoc mains are like, this is too much. Like, please, like, add the scaling back to the unblockable. This shit is unfair, and I don't want you to be, like, nerfing things that were perfectly fine to try to bring that in line and stuff, right? Like, you went too totally. far. Uh, he's wild. He is... Like you said, new armored move and the, the the low flip over thing, the new spacing on the tether uh, for the next snap that ignores armor and uh, doesn't have the scaling if you get the buff and reverse your inputs and all that sort of thing. Yeah, he's Mattis. uh havoc players are they're they're in their zone right now. But like you said, and and I kind of feel them a little bit because if you make a character too powerful, then everyone's going to bandwagon them and it kind of just ruins the essence of your character dilutes it yeah. yeah and then when they try to like revert changes or tone them down who knows what they'll do um to do that right it's not necessarily toning down the new stuff it could be stuff that you absolutely like and it's been like a real havoc staple since the start since he was you know a bottom three andy bottom three andy yep you know, we have that contrast so if he would have launched this way it would have been something else but i mean he's a boss character <laughs> the big yeah. bad of the story, and he's a boss character in the game right now. Feels like what Peacemaker was at launch. I wonder if he'll get like similar, similar yeah. treatment. I don't know. It'll be it'll be interesting. I'm I'm definitely going to be watching the the Havoc timeline carefully to see what they do with this character. Last thing I want to touch on, I mentioned a little bit with the last week with the Shujinko changes. That's big, and have actually having like my hands on it now and some time with it. That is like super huge. Like those, just giving anyone a crumple at any time is like super duper sick. And I think that's exactly what the cameo needed. He needed to be like, he needed to really hit hard because he has no ambush attacks. So his thing is extending combos and adding utility. So having a utility like that, where he gives everybody a crumple, which is extra damage on top of whatever launchers they already have, on top of whatever launchers Shuchinko has, he needed to hit really hard for that cameo to be viable, and I think that's the perfect move that they did. Have you found yourself in any situations yet to where you needed him, but he was on cooldown? Like, it doesn't take any of his meter to do that sort of thing, right? But if he gets, like, smacked out to uh, charging or in any other situation, he's not available for that, right? I guess you're kind of used to that from just using APEP punch and stuff in general. Yeah, like, the, and then that's the nice thing, too, is, like, that um that crumple is meterless it doesn't use any of his cameo meter so if you need a uh, extender or a combo extender or whatever you can just use that if you don't have them charged for whatever you want just to extend your he's just so many different ways now to extend your combos and if you do that and it comes out and the opponent blocks it he immediately goes into meditation i wish it would kind of do it on hit but that might be asking a little bit too much but you think to yeah. get that as well yeah that might be a little much Maybe just a little much to start the combo. He's charging, and you got another steal by the end of the combo. Especially if you're against someone like Ermac, where you're likely launched, and then you just pick the grab, extend it more. And how negative is it on block? Minus 13. So the risk is that you'll get punished for it on block, and he's caught in the middle, so he's also going to get smacked. 
depending on who you're fighting against, um, sometimes Shujinko will tank that first hit because there is a little bit of pushback on it. And then yeah. you can actually punish them. So although Shin Shujinko will be on cooldown, you're still punishing them because they technically whiffed their first hit hitting Shujinko, you know? Don't be... But if that, if that doesn't happen, then you're in an unbreakable combo. Very true, because Shujinko got yeah. hit. So there's the, there's the risk-reward there, right? So there's, you gotta, yep. gotta weigh that. It's, it's a good tool, but use it responsibly. And you don't always have to do it on block. Like I said, you can do it any time in a combo, so pretty easy to hit confirm it. Just once you know your combo routes, just put it in exactly where you need to put it in. You were even messing with Shujinko a little bit, which really surprised me. It just did not seem like the cameo that you would pick. I like ca I like cameos that help me a little more in neutral, and Shujinko doesn't really do that at all, other than like some of the steals and stuff, right? But I'm talking sure. about like ambushes, like things. I like cameos that have the ability, at least one ability, to be able to do things when I don't have control of my character, whether it's you know recovery or stuff like that. So Shujinko doesn't give any anything like that, but it is kind of cool. I was messing around with like noob Shujinko. You know, just any hit confirm into the crumple, and that goes into the the portal into a regular sort of noob combo, and uh, you know Tanya, just anything. So standing one into the crumple into your regular grounded combo, right, with a couple forward fours and stuff, and that gives Tanya like three hundred twenty or three hundred thirty damage, which is meterless, right, because it's not even using cameo. It's true. Uh, so that's that's not bad. Um, the last things I kind of wanted to touch on here. Uh, we got to go into online practice for the first time. It was great. I remember we were in the Discord, and you're like, all right, let me just share my screen here. And I was like, actually, we could just go into online practice now. And you're like, oh, my God, yes, we can. Because that's what we've been doing for, like, the last years, just sharing, you know, capture to Discord so we can see what each other's, what we're doing. Yeah, it's uh, it's the only option. Man, it felt like going in a time machine, to be honest, like, being able to, like, and you're like, okay, do this and do this, and I'm gonna do this, and I, don't I know. know. It felt like it felt like I was playing like MK11 or Injustice 2 again. <laughs> it was really crazy. I mean, that's what makes it so necessary is that you can set up a lot of situations with the with the practice mode settings and stuff, right? But you only get one reversal, and it's like you can't tell it to like block once and then try to reversal on the hit after that, and. You know, you tell it to flawless block, and it just flawless blocks everything. It's like, no, I just need the last thing flawless blocked, or flawless block the middle but miss the last one, or, you know, and you have a human to do that, and it's just like on the fly. Okay, so I just like it to be like, okay, I'm going to try some stuff. Just try to wiggle your way out, you know? Right. Um, I want to, it exposes holes in what you think might otherwise be like a, a good setup, and it's just like way easier to to get that done. I actually spent a good chunk of my morning with Carl uh, in that same situation where he's just doing Cyrex stuff to me. He's like, okay, so <laughs> just try to get out, right? That's the goal. Just, I'm going to hit you, and once I get started, just just try to get out of what's happening. That's, like, um, such good, like, that is, like, why that mode is so important, because, yeah, you're just, it, it's hard to do it in matches, because there's always the end of the rounds and the restarts. It's kind of annoying. Just being able to, like, infinitely just go over a setup and try different things and then say, okay, yeah. hold on, hold on, stop. That worked, so let's look at why that worked, you know? Exactly, and think about how many things that you pick up about your character when you play them in Combat League or against other friends and stuff. It's like, oh, I didn't even know that was a thing, and then you kind of go back <laughs> right. to the lab or whatever. And practice mode, like, hashes out a lot of that initial, the initial layers of that. Like, oh, I didn't consider that, or like, oh, crap, that, you know, that might actually be a better version of this. And, you know, if he tries to jump back out of this, it gives you, like, new ideas. Yeah. Um, so I'm a big fan. Me too. I'm glad Yay that online uh, practice. Glad that we got it finally. And um, finally, yeah, finally. The last thing I wanted to touch on. I'm very confused about this because uh, I didn't really know what I was looking at. But have you gone into the Warrior Shrine yet? No. When I go in there, there's like five statues with five gamer tags on it, and there's no indication of what any of it is. If it's like by region. If it's by who has the most wins and combat league, because... I think it's just high, just highest score. You know, when you look at the leaderboards, right? Everyone has like a certain amount of points. So I think it's literally just that. And it seems like I was watching Rips Arena earlier, and they were talking about. So if it is regional, I don't know if it is or not. The number one that they were talking about is a cheater. He's a lag switcher. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's not even like a competitive. You know competitive enough to do stuff like that right but 
Well, that's interesting. all this. So it's going to make the overall experience worse because now it's like encouraged even more. And I think it's already encouraged because they lock so many things behind behind it that people that normally wouldn't play ranked because they don't like to play ranked feel like they have to. They're forced into doing it because they really want that Kung Lao skin or something. And so they just, you know, lag switch their way to Demigod or Elder God or, you know, whatever it is needs to be in order to do it that was a big problem in mk11 yeah that's that is true and that's kind of what, where i was confused because i went and i looked at like some of the the combat cards of the people who are featured in the warrior shrine and they're not, not not even like on the top of the leaderboards like and one guy said he was ranked 65th so like i wasn't that's what really confused me is like what's the metric here like if you're not the number one on the ranked leaderboard why is your name on the warrior shrine i yeah. what else are you doing this person has zero games played in invasions so it's nothing invasions related uh, it's just confusing and i wish there was a little bit more information there so that i could understand it to be fair i didn't spend much time in there but um i don't know i just wanted to see if you knew something that i didn't about our brand new nope. awesome warrior shrine yeah, yeah. Like, they should just turn the whole idea of Combat League and invasions and the rewards you get combined to those things. Like, make an amalgamation and just turn it into a traditional battle pass, the way that, like, Tekken and Street Fighter are. Like, not not predatory money sorts of things, right? But it's like your activities, you can make rank still say it's double the amount of battle pass XP than playing casuals or invasions or something, but people are still earning all those rewards with just time played. And they don't need to, you know, once they're at battle pass level seven, they get their Shao, uh, their general Shao skin. They don't have to lag switch their way up to uh, Grand Master or something like that, right? To, to get it. It just... I feel like it would just normalize a lot of that sort of stuff, but maybe that's an awful idea too. I don't know. I just don't like all the reward stuff being attached to that because it just encourages, you know, people, and they're not happy to be there. It just makes it a worse experience, you know, Nobody's talking to people fun. and stuff. Yeah. Classic. Classic MK. I think that's what they tried to do with like the Towers of Time, but because uh, they have like the one that will give you like random post seasonal skins or whatever. But that seems pretty grindy to me. And it's, it's not the current ones, as far as I can tell, either. So that's the problem. I feel like that's a way... Like, last season, I literally bought everything in the seasonal shop. And I still had, like, 75,000 crowns left over or something. Literally nothing to spend them on. Right. So I feel like they introduced that to be kind of like a money dump for if you're somebody that's... Because you get a lot of it if you want the skins from, say, the Seasonal Tower, right? You accrue a, a lot of that. And that's where most of mine came from, was trying to grind for that Ermac uh, palette that was in there last season. So it would be good to have something like that. Get some skins that you missed out on before to, like, dump all your excess crowns on. But once they introduced this new money dump, they also introduced two new brutalities for literally every character at 6,000 crowns apiece. I don't know how many you've been able to buy so far, but I have a small handful, and there's just, uh, I don't I don't, I don't know. I feel like now I, I definitely don't have enough, and I'm not grinding coins, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I'm missing some for a couple of characters. I have, I think I've bought a total of like six of them, and I've went through and I have 100% every Mesa. Um, so I've done, I'm pretty much done with invasion. So I'm just going to be grinding seasonal currency through the other ways of playing. But yeah, it's quite expensive, but I mean, we still have like 50 something days for the season to end. Like, are we really that upset? We didn't unlock everything in the first week. Like, no, no. <laughs> at some point you gotta, you know, you gotta give a little, right? So, and I, and I get that. And not everyone has like all the time either. Like I'm, I've been off the last week of my day job, so that's all I did was just grind invasions and ranked and all that kind of stuff. So they gave you those extra couple little game modes or whatever in invasions too, right? To try to collect more coins. Man, some of those are so fun. I like the the brick breaker ones. Those are uh, those are just it's dumb these fun. old traditional games, like these old Atari games. They've existed as long as you know uh, two bit graphics and stuff. Uh, I like the brick breaking one. That's pretty fun. Yeah, they have. A couple of them were fun until you get to like the very end of invasions. They're just like stupid hard. Like some of the, some of the hit the target ones are kind of fun because they're very creative. And it's like, how am I supposed to? And you figure it out, and you're like, haha, I get it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And my problem with a lot of uh, nodes like that in um, 
invasions or ones that force you off the character that you want to play. Like I'm in there trying to like level up Sector so I can unlock some gear and brutals and things like that. Like, and so many things like, oh, you got to play this character and do the animality or you're doing this character and you're doing the brutality or this combo trial or this like specific, it's like, stop so, like yeeting me off this character. <laughs> um, like I have, a, I mean, you can skip a lot of that and stuff too, but that's why I do. I skip a lot of the optional stuff because, you know, I'm looking for very specific things things not uh not doing a kenchi animality or something you know so what do we let's go into kind of the new characters that they added here so we have um the sector cyrax and noob i guess you could kind of include havoc depending on your view there um you messed around mostly with sector i believe and you tried noob a little bit but noob didn't really fit with what you kind of wanted to do from what i understood Maybe, I don't know. Noob feels, has felt better, like, as time has gone on. He was really awkward. He was the very, very first character. Like, when it came down to it, I was actually torn between the three. I wanted to try them all. Uh, but, like, when it came down to it and it was time to, like, pick one, I was like, fuck it. And I just picked Noob and kind of fumbled around for a little bit. And this is, like, right when servers went uh, online. So there was some stuff flo floating around from people that went offline to get into practice mode first and uh, with the characters unlocked and stuff. Yeah, I He didn't uh, feel very great to me at first. He looks he looks clunky to me. He looks clunky to me. That's kind of what I mean, maybe I haven't really played him at all. I haven't really taken him into practice mode. I've just played games against him, but he just he looks kind of clunky and awkward. You know? I mean I'm not necessarily saying he's bad. It's just he looks like he'd be kind of a challenge to play, I guess. And I haven't really seen anyone use Embrace Chaos either, so I don't really know how good that is. <laughs> I had such a similar feeling, and a lot of it, I think, is all the disjointed hitboxes or hitboxes that come out, right? When his clone's doing parts of the string and stuff, and it's, he's got long strings, you know, two, one, two, one, two, or one, two, one, two, one, and stuff. And you're just sitting there watching the whole animation, waiting for the game to catch up to you and stuff because of the way he moves. But he does have a flow uh, to to that right and if you're the kind of player that resonates with that there is definitely uh a purpose to be had with kind of like his rhythm of things i feel like he's a character that kind of like shifts gears like it was as slow and muddy as you say that you think that he feels as soon as you're like you're launched from like an ex teleport or something like you are in sixth gear because you have a nanosecond to jump to con you know to to catch that thing uh before you just lose the whole combo so it goes from this kind of like almost slow like methodical sort of thing to this like overdrive to get your your jump strings in before the the combo goes away or something um that makes sense i, I kind of like it it took me a few days to wrap my head around that i am interested to see how the meta changes around his ghost ball because i feel like right now somebody will hit me with a ball and then i'm just going to sit there and block until they decide to try and burst it or it just goes away. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how meta changes on that part. If that's going to, they're going to be like, all right, well, now I get a free grab because you're just sitting there blocking, or now I'm going to try and shimmy you because you think I'm going to grab you because I think you're just going to sit there and block and, you know, that kind of thing. Or I'm going to do new things like I'm going to have a well spaced slide or a well spaced dive kick or something. I might be punishable. Do you want to try to punish me? Because if you whiff that punish or <laughs> you're like whatever, up. then. You know, you're getting smacked by the goo, the exorcism, they call it. The uh, exorcism. When you pop it. I like that. Yeah. So he's cool. He's got cool swag and he's Bihan. I think they did a really good job of like, our Bihan Sub Zero is this same person, right? And his last mask that you unlock is you even get the, the man bun, right? He's the hoodless uh, noob. Have you unlocked all of his gear now? His yep. mastery? Yep. I did him and Sector. You had a lot of criticisms about uh, a lot of the headpieces because they they give you a mask and a hood. You can't like yeah can't change them. So some of them looked kind of kind of funky. The exactly some of the hoods look really good. There's one that I don't really like, but most of it's like the mask looks really good. But I'm not wearing that hat. No fucking way. Like <laughs> you think uh, you think I'm working at the World Bank in the 14th century or something, or you know. <laughs> I'm in fucking parliament or like uh, he's missing like a, a white powdered wig. I feel like with some of those, some of those hats. <laughs> uh, that's, that is so funny. I remember. Yeah. I just remember you, how annoyed you were going through there and looking at him. That's not great. 
That's, I know. That's cool. But that hat, though, <laughs> it was yeah. really funny. I kind of feel that way about the Sector and Cyrex gear, too. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the Ant-Man stuff, right? It's cool if people want, like, more techie stuff, like every every person to themselves. And there's, like, some Fallout-looking helmets, right? Like, uh... But and there, but there's at least stuff to use. There's a good ver variety of things. They have those dynamic masks too that open up. Most of them open to show their face or at least part of their face. I think Sector is super sick. She's definitely the highlight of all three of them for me. The one that I spent the most time with. I did get a little salty with her because I didn't really understand how she works. So I was just moping around the Discord all day. Like Sector sucks. She's so bad. Why would you ever do yep. this character? I don't, wanted... don't, ever, don't you dare try to say something nice about Sector when Dink's in the call. It is <laughs> not acceptable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I went and I watched some footage and I saw some things that I've clearly been not utilizing in my game plan. So Like? Like the homing missile. Um, I didn't use it at all because I'm so cheap with my meter. I just, I'm just so used to like needing it for breaker or whatever that like like 100 percent needing it for offense is like not really in my brain right now but like seeing some of the things that people were doing and like full-on getting combos off of homing missile because people are pressing buttons or free throws or all that kind of stuff i was like well, and you think like the when you play sector like with really busy neutral with all those air grenades and stuff you're just building all sorts of meter the whole time that you're doing that and we saw even in the bone dome last night koala was playing sector chameleon yep and was spent using his meter very liberally for homing, uh, the homing sidewinders and also for the air thrusts right out of like a whiff forward four or just the forward three or something. And he got a lot of mileage out of that, right? That, that is a lot to think about. That sector chameleon, that was wild. That was wild. There was just things on the screen at all times. And, uh, yeah, I definitely saw a lot of what I, I was, thought I missed. Koala definitely kind of. Uh, solidified that for me last Put night. Put that watching. together for you. Yeah, because I was like, all right, I had uh, have all these ideas, and it's almost like he knew exactly what I was doing, even though I wasn't streaming it. And then I watched him, and he's like, I was like, that's what I was just doing in the practice mode. What the hell, Koala? You're reading my mind. Uh, but uh, she's super or, sick. Or the or it's the nanny cam he slipped into your. Have you received any packages from him lately? No, I should check the corners of my room here. Yeah, What's yeah. going on? What's going on? I here? like Sector a lot too. She's my most spent, like my time most spent for sure, and the one that I think has the most potential in the long run for me personally. I think she's got a couple weird quality of life things. A lot of people have mentioned kind of like cameos are a little weird with her because so many are kind of finicky with her combo paths. Right. Uh, so she may be lacking in some synergy, but she obviously has high synergy with a couple. Um, there's no way if you've looked at this, like any sort of gameplay, you haven't seen Sector Motaro. No, that seems to be the big meta pick right now is like the EX projectile into full combo from teleport into another EX projectile. Like two bars, like 500 damage, but two bars and... Like but you don't cameo. need to, I mean, that's just for the damage, right? You can do the exact same thing with Flamethrower. So no bars and full cameo using Flamethrower instead for not as much damage, but still good damage. And that's all grounded before she even launches. And that's where things get weird, right? After you've done like the the flak missiles, right? The down back two and you call in a Movado or a Sonier, like whatever. Who knows what could happen sometimes? Um, teleport a little finicky and stuff sometimes. And these are all things that she can, like, it's in her arsenal to be able to two-on-one cancel when she spends meter to parry a projectile. Uh, she can cancel into a teleport, right, to try to catch you in recovery. It's a little bit too slow for that. Like, maybe the developer's like, no, don't use it, like, for this. Uh, she, But she can use it from any any other time that she's got air version, she got ground version. It's hard for me to think that it's not going to be used for, like, oh, my gosh, you did something, and I've got a tracking teleport. It's so weird. Like, I get it in, in some context, but it still feels like if you clip it just wrong or you're doing the exact same combo and the manual timing's just off a teeny bit, you go from having like a full launch to like the, the wimpiest, most flaccid <laughs> little little pop-up that 
it, it sucks to like in the middle of a match, right? And you got your hit conformer. You go for like whatever. Like, no, I wish my jump too because I got the baby and I got the baby launch. The, the flash. Like the launch. teleport hit just like a little, <laughs> a little shallow or something. But at the end of the day, she has the biggest fun factor for me. Yeah, she's she can definitely zone, and that's what I like to do, as everyone knows. And I've been using Shujinko with her, and probably not her best synergy with for cameo, but I mean, he does give her damage where she wouldn't get it otherwise, even with the crumple, um, which is something that's nice, that even from her airborne combos, he's still able to give her that crumple. And then if you set up, like, uh, like knock him back, full screen, whatever, with a standing three into enhanced sidewinder, you could do the homing missile, regular missile, Shujinko projectile steal, depending on the matchup, and then another missile. Right. And they're kind of forced to kind of hold all of that and try and duck under the the highs and whatnot. So it's um it can be pretty oppressive. I'm I'm when she gets going, she gets going. But sometimes I do struggle getting that with her. Like I I feel like I'm constantly running away. Um, which is fine. I I like to do that, but I don't feel she does that as well as Quan because I don't have like a push away portal or an armor portal or whatever. That kind of stuff. But. No, but she's got some evasiveness with her air thrusters and things like that, too, right? And you can, like, uh, a lot of feints and things like that. Oh, you think I'm going back, but I'm really going forward. Or you think I'm going back? Yep, I'm going double back. And now right. eat the grenade. And now I've got the hit advantage to do another grenade. If you try to do anything, then I'm plus 68 unless you, like, try to armor through it. But wait, I've already recovered and I'm waiting for it. Now you're in the middle of a combo into another Sidewinder missile setup. Hold that shit, bitch, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um she can be very slippery and she's got a cool mix of evasion it's weird it takes some like getting used to like holding the forward three and canceling it and doing the thrusters from it and stuff and that's like a big part i think it's so fun you can do the sonia dive kick right off of it so it's like one more thing to worry about coming from forward three is the safe launching overhead uh that gives a really meaty combo with the bicycle kick but even the regular dive kick you know gives you know, that's like a 280 damage combo or something into a sidewinder. I'll have to um, I'll have to look at the cooldown on that dive kick, because, like, that sounds like it could be a really fun team. Like, even, like, using Sonya's projectile to make, like, your own, like, force them to block your projectile, because her projectile is a mid, right? But her... Well, yeah, so when you do your standing three, instead of canceling it into the sidewinder, cancel it into a charged Sonya projectile after, you know, the 30 frames or whatever, you're moving around like it's an ambush, and then you do your sidewinder, and now they're holding her charged projectile plus frames into the sidewinder, uh, which is more plus frames, and if her projectile hit, they're popped up. I haven't gone through this thoroughly, right? This is like a w mental workshop, and we'll have to see if this works right, but those are like right. the kind of ideas. If you can get a sidewinder to hit off of that pop-up, uh, that is a situation where I feel like I'm max screen and I've capitalized on my zoning. I'm going to teleport and do something. A teleport will not work there. Um, <laughs> We've talked about that. I think that teleport is like not really meant to just be kind of thrown out there as much. Like yeah. you're saying with the kind of... <laughs> I love, I'm just it's, not like, it's not like whiff punishing with a dive kick or something, right? It's not like a great whiff punisher. But there are opportunities where I feel like it's intended to be that way. And it doesn't, you know, like it just, I don't know. Sorry, finish your thought. No, I was just going to say, sometimes <laughs> I love I love the term you use, flaccid, uh, <laughs> a little flaccid yeah. launcher there. Uh, a little yeah. limp wiener combo. Yeah, <laughs> it just, just keeps going. Um, okay, but we, we could gush about Sector all day. One last character to go over. Elephant in the room, as far as I've seen, Cyrax, and that character makes people salty. Like, it's like I paid how much to play this game? I'm not even getting to play it right now. Like, all like watching Brown Boy last night and just like bomb, 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 bomb. Like, okay, they blow you up, net, bomb, 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 bomb. And it's like, what, what am I supposed to press a button? Like, where are the setups? And you were saying that you went through it with Carl this morning, did it? Did it feel like it made more sense once you kind of understood what? the strategies were or? no because there's so many different <laughs> sorts of strategies and the way they're going to be mixing you up and things like that everyone's got their own variety of bomb combos you don't know if it's going to be throw or it's going to be some weird shimmy into teleport which is another bomb and they did like something else and they're taking your meter with the ground one and i'm trying to it's not as bad as people make it out to be there is like counterplay i think to a degree what's and people say, this is how Cyrax has always been. And that's fine. That doesn't mean that it's like good, healthy gameplay. Oh, like no. completely removing one player from a two-player game uh, 
into that sort of like vortex stuff. That's just, I always think about, I want to say it here on the podcast. We talked about this, you know, the other day, but Keats, one of the the devs for Killer Instinct and all their, the wild shit they have going on in their games and stuff, right? And that's why they have combo breakers. It's very interactive. Even when you're being comboed, you have a chance to kind of like break on defense. Right. But even then, some character designs can be like super, super oppressive. Um, and he, he talks about what, what what removes the fun of a fighting game. Everyone expects wacky bullshit, right? Uh, but what makes people like really salty and what makes it not fun is when you remove the interactivity. When it's based like first interaction, now I'm in a net, now I'm in bombs, now I'm in oaky. Oh, I tried to duck under the throw and I got hit by the bomb or I got thrown into the bomb or I tried to jump out of the throw and the bomb hit me on the way down uh, or I tried to micro duck the throw and then block the bomb afterwards, but I wasn't quick enough or like whatever, right into that sort of thing. You know, like an MK actually got like a, what were those combos? 170 damage, 280 damage <laughs> and stuff. She's out here, you know, churning out 350 and you got Mavado giving her setups off of armor and throws and... Man, it is it is a little hard to deal with just because it feels the combos take so long too, right? Like you're waiting like five minutes to like take your turn or to like make your read or see, you know, just think about what you I guess you can think about your defense. <laughs> so what am I gonna do? I guess it depends how they end. I don't know. How do you feel about it? Um, I don't like the design. I think there's not enough risk reward. Like I get being mixed, but if you block it, there seems to be like another bomb behind her, and she's not usually very unsafe. That's the problem that I have with it. I don't mind if you want to play if you want to have a vortex character in a game, but there should be risk reward there for guessing correctly against her. And it doesn't seem in this iteration that that's really the case. Like she hits you, she gets your stuff going. Maybe you get the right read and you just jump. And hope she doesn't anti-air you on the other side. And hope that she's whiffing a throw or something. Or they, you delay wake up and hope that something whiffs there and you still don't get like a hard punish. You know, that's what bothers me about it. Right. No, I, I agree. To some, to some extent, though, I do have to kind of agree that that's how Cyrex has always been. Not, again, not saying it's particularly good gameplay, but in like MK9, Cyrax had the... Went around for free, basically. <laughs> you don't have a breaker, one combo, a net and a dream, baby. That's what they said. MKX, yeah. the the combos did really crappy damage, but you you weren't able to play for like ten seconds while Cyrax does these combos, which is not fun to fight against. Even though that character wasn't particularly top tier, it just wasn't fun to fight against because you're not playing the game. You're not doing, like you said, not being interactive. There's nothing you can do outside of a breaker, and then it seems to be very similar in this game. Which I, I I respect the continuity and like the the um what's the term that I'm looking for like the reoccurrence of a character's gameplay kind of how they did in Justice legacy yeah their their the, the consistency this kind of got some legacy stuff right a little bit of like everything and they did that with Sector Two to a degree I mean Sector's got way better buttons than Sector do, uh, than Cyrax does oh, to 100%. some extent Huge um range. but dude the thing is. Whenever I get hit by a Cyrax player, it's like, can we, can you just take like your 350 damage into setup and we can move on with our lives? I wish there was a way just <laughs> right. to fast forward past it, right? It's like getting opened up with Shang ground fireball. I feel like, okay, so this is like, I've got to slot the time on my calendar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't have time for this today. Can you come back on Tuesday? Dude, it just irritates me. It tilts me so much. It makes it more, so much more tilting than it should be. Um, so it's not just Cyrax, right? It's stuff like that. She just kind of like has that flavor. And it's kind of hard to talk about the character this way because I don't want to take away from the gameplay anybody's doing. Like we have really legitimate, very good players putting in a lot of work with her and doing really nasty, nasty stuff because the character's nasty, nasty. Yeah, she is. But uh, so not taking away from any of the players at all. No. If they were honest with themselves, they know that it's not like, no, 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 she's fine. Don't touch her. Don't touch her. Don't touch her. Anybody that's like saying that, like, I don't feel like is being honest. <laughs> like we were saying last night when we you were like, oh, yeah, I can I can hear a brown boy right now just being like, I am so sorry as he's just yeah. dumping bombs on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, and you're going to see that. We'll We'll see how like. It could be that it's still early. We're all missing something. I, I tend to kind of watch like the meta of the competitive scene to kind of see if there's not a whole lot of Cyraxes in there. Sometimes she's just 
she's just, I don't know, there's something that we missed that everyone else is doing, and we're like, oh, why didn't we do that, you know, and negate the whole thing or whatever, but... I, I mean, it's just the end of week one, and we'll see, like, we saw the army of Ermax and the army of, like, everything else when things are fresh. It's going to be interesting in a couple of weeks to see how the dust settles and how people are actually playing these characters, like, in the long run. Like, I wonder what Sector is going to look like in November, you know? The people that are still playing her, the kind of cameos they're using, what their game plan is, what was figured out week one, what shit that took, like, a month to figure out, um... What sort of things did we think was like really good and there was really obvious counterplay that nobody ever did so no one does it anymore? You know, <laughs> right. things like that that always kind of tend to surface. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, potentially beginning a ghost face by then and assumably another patch. So we'll see if anything changes there. I'm I'm preparing for, for ghost face by watching all the scary movies. So I watched two of them last night. <laughs> <laughs> the first two? Yeah, the first two. The first one didn't hold up as much as I remember. I haven't watched that one in a while. Sec the second one's pretty good. So the number three is still the, the top for me. That's Take my strong hand. <laughs> yeah. No, my strong, my hand. strong hand. Yeah, Bro, be. Chris Elliott in that movie. That is disturbing. They better give him the uh the scary movie, the the what's up mask. <laughs> I want the that so bad. Up. I want that so bad. Um, that would be that would be too good. That would be too good. We'll have a lot to talk on Ghostface. Really quickly to round this out, I kind of wanted to go over your review of the story and kind of give you my thoughts and stuff on that. Because like, I, I I mean I thought it was a super fun story. I thought that uh, I didn't really care for Cyrax's character as much. Really, just I don't know. She the writing in general of everything just kind of didn't really put her in that well i guess i don't know i'm sector was a badass and and so was beyond is so angsty in the whole story <laughs> even at the end where luke kang's like trying to hold him back and he's just like oh man spoilers by the way i won't get into too much here but spoilers on this part so if you haven't completed the story yet turn it off turn it off right here I definitely feel like Sector's attitude fit a lot more of like just the MK universe in general, like how how people actually act and interact with each other. And I felt like there was some stuff missing in Cyrax and her character development and the way she kind of like interacted with the other characters that I don't know, it didn't didn't work to a degree. She was like very wholesome, like Raiden and you know, Kung Lao, like to a degree. Probably should be hanging out with them, but even then, like I don't I don't know. I thought I thought that it was fine. I like the setup, like the way they introduced them and stuff. And then you got the one that drank the Kool Aid, and the other one drank the Kool Aid, but she's still like open minded, you know. But even like later when things are exposed, sectors like, okay, well, I'm not a total bitch, you know. Like, I'm <laughs> right. not. So yeah, I feel like I feel like the whole time that everything was happening, like Cyrax kind of kind of knew something wasn't right there. Just like kind of had a, a feeling she was getting gaslit by Bihan, but like. Obviously, that's all she knows, so, like, she can't really go against it. So when Scorpion's finally like, you know, like, you really think I would do that? Like, she's like, well, now know. that you mention <laughs> it. Now that you mention it, like, <laughs> now that it kind of seems like maybe you wouldn't, you know? Speaking of Scorpion, his voice, the way they did all the motion capture, whoever they used as a face model, uh, whoever did the costume design, like, for all of this, that voice actor... Scorpion is my MVP uh, for the DLC story, in my opinion. I think he had some of the strongest scenes and the best delivery. Uh, whoever that voice actor is, Blue's already told me, and I and I forgot, right? But he's badass. He's, uh, in my opinion, he's better in the two and a half hours I played in Chaos Reigns than he was in the full story mode. I liked. Yeah. He just had so much more like. He had like a passion feeling. in his voice, yeah, man. Emotion. Like it was like, fuck yeah, I'm on team score. I want to root for this guy, you know? Right? It was totally yeah, it was it was fantastic. The whole way through and the way he just kind of talks down to Cyrax at the start, and then like at the end, he's like, No, no, I you an know, imitation and like all that kind of stuff is like super like serious about it, you know? Like, oh man, they killed that role. Absolutely killed yep. it. I not quite my MVP, but like a close second, I would say. I'm I uh my MVP actually isn't even a character playable character at all. I was so stoked when they had the call out to Orin the dragon that uh Tanya talks to. 
Um, oh, yeah. Because I loved Mortal Kombat Armageddon. As flawed as that game was, I really enjoyed the story, and I really enjoyed all that stuff. So it really felt like a big callback to that. As soon as they said, the, like, I saw the dragons, like, okay, it's a dragon, whatever. And then I think it was Hammock that was like, oh, we need Orin will get them. And I was like, no way, no fucking way. They did that run. I was so stoked. And, like, that whole sequence with, like, Tanya going into, like, the void or whatever and, like, talking to Orin and figuring all that stuff out. I, uh, that was my favorite part of the entire story. Hands down. I know a lot of people probably will not get that reference. It'll be lost in them, which makes me sad. But I was so excited. And even, like, the the rain and um, the Tanya thing felt really, like, a parallel to, like, Argus and Delia from that same game. So, like, mm -hmm. I thought that was, like, a super, super cool way to do it. <laughs> Although, the way that he introduces himself, I thought was kind of douchey, because he's, like... Uh, he's like, don't call me by my title because I don't have it anymore. And it's, <laughs> it's like, you've never met these people. These people have no idea you have a title. You could just be like, I'm, I'm Rain. Nice to meet you. You know, and like, I, I used to be Emperor Rain, but don't call me that anymore. You can just call me Rain. <laughs> it's like, what a weird way to introduce yeah. yourself. <laughs> uh, uh, man, my favorite story mode moment was when Frost one shot Quan Chi and then the camera goes up for the bird's eye view and she raises her arms in the air and she's like, fuck yeah, Frost is awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's so proud of herself. <laughs> but classic Frost, right? That's what she would do in, in all iterations of her too. She would be so, super excited for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> it's so funny to me. Why is Quan Chi always getting his ass kicked in these story modes? I don't think he sucks. No one <laughs> yeah. likes Quan. I don't all my homies love Quan Chi. Um, no. like he's got only his... wrong people like Quan Chi. We all know that. Well, if that's wrong, then I don't want to be right, baby. I mean, that's your prerogative. <laughs> uh, Alec, I did this. Um, I was doing some character towers last night, and I, uh, I did uh, use Shujinko. And when I went up against the final boss, and like the final boss is like Shang Tsung with the Quan Chi cameo, I was like. I can steal that Quan Chi cameo. And that causes some buggy stuff to happen. Like, Oh, wow. That's a, actually a good thought. Yeah. Yeah. So I went in there and I was like, I, I stole the cameo. I was using Quan Chi because he gets like his classic runes, which the animation is just the uh, MK11 ground skulls that Shang does. Um, but it's runes. Um, but like if you hit Shang with that at certain times, sometimes a different um, ninja will come on the screen. And Shang will be moving around with this ninja at the same time. Like there was like a classic Ermac that came out that I think he morphs into at some point. But what the hell? Yeah, okay. it's really weird. Like I'll try and see if I can capture it at some point here and show you guys. But yeah, it's like Shang's walking on screen. You're on screen. But there's also like this ninja on screen that's like with Shang and they're moving together. It's, it's the most bizarre shit ever. I really think they weren't intending for you to actually do that. But I did. And I saw some shit. Nice. I think we covered uh, covered everything. We went over all the balances, new characters, and how frustrating Cyrax is. And their little review we didn't of the story. really talk about in depth the new Sub Zero and Sonya and some of the other cameo changes, but we can save that for next time. It gives a whole new, a whole uh, additional week to practice some stuff. Yeah, we still still have some time to flesh some things out and go over. I do want to try out that Sonya sector because once. Uh, you know, just as a fun pairing, not anything serious, but like, that sounds like it'd be pretty frustrating from our conversation today. So kind of excited to get into that. Indeed. Indeed. But on that note, that's it for another week. So thank you everyone for listening along. We'll be back next time. Same time as usual. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like because it really helps me out and subscribe if you haven't because I make new videos almost every single day. Hashtag Bonehawks, all that stuff. And we'll see all you Bonehawks in the next video. Accept your death.